All right, so there's a new article out today, and it is confirming that Rammstein concerts will not be canceled in Berlin. Now, as I have been saying for a while now, the real test with this Rammstein situation was going to be whether they would be allowed to play in Berlin and whether they would could get through this controversy without their Berlin concerts being canceled or adversely impacted. And it looks like they're going to get through it. And I'm very, very happy to see that. It is nice in today's cancel culture to, to see these occasions where the mob doesn't get what it wants. In the mainstream media, they don't get what they want. And these ridiculous accusers don't get what they want. But oh man, a lot of complaining, some people very upset. So I wanted to look at one of these articles. Um, it says, uh, despite calls for the cancellation of concerts amid allegations of sexual assault against Till Lindemann, Rammstein fans will get to see the band in Berlin. The article says, the campaign, No Stage for Rammstein, has been calling for the cancellation of the three Rammstein concerts scheduled for mid-July in Berlin following accusations of sexual assault against singer Till Lindemann. Now, on my channel, I have gone through these accusations ad nauseum. I have debunked them. I have interviewed people who were there. I've interviewed people who know the main accuser and so forth. So check out my channel if you want to know why these accusations are BS and why Rammstein should not be canceled. But um, it says the band will be playing at the Olympia Stadium in Berlin on July 15th, 16th, and 18th. This is weekend, right? Or is it next week? As part of their European tour, the concerts with more than 60,000 tickets per night are sold out, sold out concerts in Berlin. Berlin Senator for Culture, Joe Schialo, has reacted to the petition, which has collected more than 74,000 signatures. Now, Understand, so there was a petition that someone set up and it's collected 70-something thousand signatures. I'm sure it'll collect more by the time we get to the concert. And this was a, a petition that someone set up to try to, um, to try to lobby for the concerts to be canceled. Now, Till Lindemann's lawyers, the law firm Schertz Bergman, they have been they have been so on top of things. I tell you, I am so impressed with how Lindemann's lawyers have conducted themselves. Uh, I don't know and how on top of things they have been because because they went after this petition. They have tried to have this petition legally sanctioned, and they have sent a cease and desist to. The promoters of this petition, they're going after it because there's actual defamation in the petition itself. Yes, of course, people should have the right to petition for anything. All right. It's not a freedom of speech issue. The issue, the problem is that in this petition, there are multiple defamatory claims made about Till Lindemann and Rammstein. Okay. And so, again, there's freedom of speech. But freedom of speech has its limits. And when you are defaming someone with lies, then it's a problem. So I'm really impressed with that. And I'm really impressed with the fact that Lindemann's lawyers went to court in Germany. And as I talked about in another video, were able to get a court ruling against Der Spiegel for the largest anti-Rammstein, anti-Lindemann article that has come out, the most important anti-Rammstein, anti-Lindemann article that has come out in the last several months since this scandal began. It was that Der Spiegel cover article, the one entitled The Fall of Rammstein. And it had a lot of claims in it, very problematic claims. And as it turns out, a number of false defamatory claims. And I've talked about this in a prior video, so you can check it out. I talked about a number of the things that were false in this, in this um, story. So Rammstein's lawyers, Lindemann's lawyers, got a court ruling against Der Spiegel, and the court banned Der Spiegel from further reporting this story because of the lies that they had disseminated in their story. And, and so what happened was Rammstein's lawyers, Lindemann's lawyers went to court and they proved to this court, okay, they were able to prove that aspects, major aspects of this um, article were lies. And so a court actually shut them down. Now, here's the significance of it is that you don't see this kind of stuff happening in, in the cases in the U.S. that I've been covering.
And I don't know if that is an issue with the legal representation or if the problem is that because of our greater appreciation for free speech in our country, it's just much more difficult to do these types of legal maneuvers. And so I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if, uh, if it's a, an issue with legal representation. And, and that's why we've not seen Marilyn Manson, for instance, his attorneys as proactive in some of these ways. Um, or if it's just a matter of it being just it's easier to go after the press in Germany, or maybe maybe it's the latter entirely. But the point is, I was very impressed to see that Lindemann's lawyers went after the Der Spiegel article and they went after this petition for containing very defamatory information, defamatory claims. So anyway, the point is, though, you have um, a number of people including some uh, German politicians who really hope to bring Rammstein down and to shut them down. And they're not going to be able to do it. So the Berlin Senator for Culture, he said, uh, he said the demand is emotional. The demand for the cancellation of Rammstein concert is emotionally understandable. First of all, I don't know what that means. Emotionally understandable. We shouldn't care about emotions in cases like this. We should care about facts and we should care about the presumption of innocence. So it doesn't matter if something is emotionally understandable, okay? You're always going to have activists who are on an, an emotional trip about something or other. That doesn't mean that we cater to it. But he says the demand is emotionally understandable, but legally there is no leverage. You can almost hear the wah, wah in the background, right? You just know that this guy and some of these others they just they just hate the fact that they don't have any leverage to shut this these concerts down because you know they'd love to. He continues, he says, I'm always on the side of the victims, of course. And I take the allegations made by these women very seriously. Of course, I hate the way that in these kinds of situations, there are always people who will assume that the that the quote unquote victims or the people making these allegations are telling the truth. You know, he says, I'm always on the side of the victims, of course. Well, maybe you shouldn't always be on the side of the alleged victims. Maybe you should be on the side of presumption of innocence. Maybe you shouldn't always be so sympathetic to alleged victims until they're actually proved to be victims. The platform that this petition was posted on, they've even come out with a statement um, the name of the platform is Campact. Anyway, they, they issued a statement and they said, we stand behind the initiator of the petition and support her demands. This is the, what the managing director of the platform said. And again, again, this is part of the problem is that people, there's a certain segment of society that just assumes that when people make claims like this, when women make claims like this, that they're telling the truth. And so they, this is part of the believe all women crowd, unfortunately. So, you know, they don't care. They don't care if they're posting defamatory content on their site because they don't believe it's possible for women to make defamatory statements, apparently. Everything that women say, everything that, that, that people purporting to be victims say just automatically must be the truth. It's a ridiculous, ridiculous assertion. So anyway, the article continues and it talks about how the concerts are going to take place without the row zero section, the row zero area, and without parties. So one of the things that I have pointed out before is that while, while these accusers and while these protesters have not been able to cancel Rammstein and have not been able to cancel Rammstein concerts, they have been successful in getting row zero and the pre and after parties shut down. So there, there are no, I've been told there are no after parties going on. I mean, even for male fans, because like I said, there were a lot of men who were invited to the after party, uh, at the after parties at these concerts, but, but no more. So the, there's no parties, no, no meet and greets, no parties, no row zero, no nothing again. And, you know, this is just one of the things that, uh, that ends up happening in situations like this. When you have situations where allegations are made, it inevitably results in a loss of greater freedom for larger groups of people. So you have these individual claimants, this tiny minority of people making claims, tiny minority. What do we have? We have Crazy Shelby. 
We have opportunist Kayla Schicks, who didn't even see anything, never even met Till Lindemann. And then we have, what, several of these anonymous women that, uh, that the German media claimed to have interviewed who won't even go on the record and won't even put their names on the record. That's what we've got. We've got like this handful of people with their, with their frankly, batshit crazy lies and delusions. And, uh, and that means that no part, nobody can have any parties, no parties for anyone, no pre-party, no after party, no row zero. So again, this is what, and this is why I have an issue with cancel culture and with this kind of cultural sexual panic and with this kind of new repression, this new Puritanism is that in the name of safety, it ends up reducing freedom for the larger group of people. It ends up reducing exposure to, to interesting experiences because now there's lots of people that were looking forward to going to these parties and people who are looking forward to participating in row zero and it's not going to happen. And I've seen um, emails, messages, DMs from a number of people who are really bummed out about it because one of the things that one of the reasons why they got tickets to Rammstein concerts is because they also expected that they were going to be able to go to these parties. For some of these women, I've, I've heard about some women who are buying like $500 designer dresses designer outfits to be able to uh, to go stand in row zero and to be on Instagram and everything. They were really looking forward to this and they weren't afraid of Till Lindemann. And now they can't do it. So anyway, but I'm so glad that Rammstein is going to be able to continue their tour. And I think that if they can get through the Berlin leg of the tour without incident, I do think it is, uh, it's smooth sailing onward after that. And thank God. And it is so nice to see that one of these big attempts at cancellation has not been successful. It has been, it has been resisted and it has been ineffectual. So good for that. Good for us. And kudos to all of you who have stood firm. And kudos to Rammstein for standing firm. All right, everybody. As always, uh, check out my playlist linked below for more on the Rammstein case. I've got a lot of interesting videos, interviews, all kinds of stuff. And check out my channel for other celebrity stories and cancel culture stories. And uh, as always, I, I appreciate your support. And my links are below. And as always, I appreciate your support. And my links are below. Bye, everybody.